Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another Europa Barbarorum 2 guide video. I know I, I haven't done that many of these recently but um, yeah so this guide is going to be for the Koinon Helenon, the Greek cities in uh, Europa Barbarorum 2 and uh, basically it's uh, it's rated as challenging, the Koinon Helenon campaign. It's not the toughest campaign in EB2. Um, there are definitely tougher factions like um, Pontus and uh, Hayastan that we talked about before, and uh, the Lugiones and a few others. The Saka Rauka are also tough. Um, so uh, this is just going to be a quick guide and a quick... Um, kind of early faction tips sort of video because I've been getting a lot of requests to continue this series. And uh, basically, the Koinon Helenon represent the um, Cremonidian League, which was the anti-Macedonian uh, League of Cities that were uh, fighting against Macedonian expansion in uh, southern Greece. And uh, basically, yeah, basically, uh, you start out with three settlements, unlike it, Vanilla Rome Total War. In Vanilla Rome, uh, the Greek cities have, you know, a whole bunch of weird settlements like a Pergamon and Syracuse, I believe, and a few others. No, I can't remember. Um, but in any case, uh, there are a lot of mods and Rome too as well that include these as separate factions, so Rhodes is his own faction, Sparta, Athens. But in EB2 and in EB1, uh, these factions are combined. Uh, Athens, Sparta, and Rhodes are combined into the Koinon Helenon faction. So really, you're in charge of uh, a league of city-states, which means that these are technically different factions, uh, even though uh, you're commanding all of them. And EB2 and EB1 as well does a very good job at making it feel like you're controlling a couple of different factions at the same time. Now, at the beginning of the campaign, uh, first of all, I want to mention that uh, the Greek cities were sending embassies all over the place. So you have a um, diplomat as well as a fleet uh, near Alexandria, near uh, the Ptolemaic capital. And uh, this was your embassy, a historical embassy that was sent to the Ptolemies at this time. Uh, so uh, you probably want to pull your fleets back um, because you also have a fleet up here near uh, the Bosporan capital, the capital of the kingdom of the Cimmerian Bosporus up in the north here, which is a major faction in EB2, but not in EB1. Uh, I know I still haven't completed my video on the differences between EB2 and EB1, but I, I am working on it. I'm thinking about it. It's not the easiest topic given the vastness of these mods. But in any case, you also have a diplomat up here near Byzantium. And uh, let's go to the main area where you start out in. Uh, your homeland. So you have Sparta, which is a town. You have Athens, which is your capital. And you have Rhodes, which is another town. And uh, you have a few troops in Rhodes. You start out with a couple of slingers, some hoplites. The, the hoplites are going to be your bread and butter, as the coin on Helenon. We'll talk a little bit about their military uh, in just a little bit. But in any case, you have some troops spread out all over the place. You have fleets spread out and you have troops spread out. So you have a spy on Crete and you have your leader who is uh, represented by Arius, um, the king of Sparta at the time, uh, with a couple of troops, Cretan Peltists and Spartan Hoplites, so very good troops um, in Crete. So you probably want to... What I do at the beginning is I would... Uh, take this fleet, take my Rhodian troops that are expendable, that I can take out of Rhodes, put it onto this fleet, and then move this fleet to Crete, uh, move my Spartans uh, and Cretans, my troops, onto the fleet, and then together bring those 
uh, to Sparta or Athens uh, to reinforce my mainland uh, defenses. And this is just how I personally approach uh, playing as the Koinon Helenon. And uh, your first order of business is uh, to defend against your attackers. So you have a couple of attackers at the start. Uh, not only Macedon, because uh, Macedon is obvious. You're at war with them, and uh, that's the whole reason for the existence of your League of Cities. And uh, the Macedonians have some troops on um, uh, Euboea, the island of Euboea, as well as in, uh, th they have Corinth under their control, which is a major city. or um, It's a minor city, but I mean it's important and rich. So it's important to secure Corinth as early as possible. Uh, you have uh, Thermon, Aetolia, here, uh, representing the Aetolian League, right? And you also have Pyrrhus of Epirus with a large Epirote army uh, here in the province of the Peloponnese. So you have... Um, and they are also at war with you. So historically, the uh, League of Cities here, they called... Um, Pyrrhus of Epirus to help fight the Macedonians and he arrived and started wreaking havoc all over the place. So uh, you, not uh, you notice from all the explanations I've given that your forces are very much spread out. So you have um, you have a bunch of generals here and most of these generals have uh, hoplite bodyguards. So either regular hoplites, uh, which are very good, or you have some generals with Spartan hoplites, again, because you're controlling a very diverse faction, a faction of a bunch of different city-states. Uh, all of these generals are going to have different bodyguards, at the start, at least. Uh, this guy has the standard uh, general's bodyguard for the Greek cities. Um, the Somatophilake Stratego, right? Um, which, again, is a good unit. And you have one guy, one weird guy, who has a normal medium cavalry bodyguard. So the main thing you have to know for the Greek cities, if you haven't noticed already, is that your army is going to be very infantry heavy, heavy spearmen heavy. So it's a very good anti-cavalry army but again you're going to be fighting at the start um, Macedonians and um, Epirotes right so you're going to be facing pretty similar forces even though the Macedonians have um, more phalanxes uh, so and you have not too much cavalry to call upon so you can recruit some Hippocontistae and uh, the backbone of your cavalry forces the Hippeus medium cavalry. They're not bad. They're about as good as um, Cappadocian medium cavalry, the Iranian medium cavalry, but they're nowhere near as good as uh, having access to cataphracts early in the campaign uh, or general's bodyguard cataphracts. They're nowhere near as good as that. Um, and uh, yeah, you have to rely on making a very strong battle line with your heavy infantry. You have pretty weak missile troops, so these Akantistai are pretty weak, and you have a few slingers on roads. Not even the unique Rhodian slingers, just these basic slingers. Not the best. And, um, yeah, so at the beginning of the campaign, of the KH campaign, I've done a few test campaigns, um, what you have to do is you have to defend yourself at the beginning. So I play a little bit... Uh, the the Koinon Helenon are a bit of a defensive faction at the start because you're facing more powerful enemies immediately. But uh, not all is lost. So you have a lot of generals' bodyguards all over the place. And these are very good units, especially for holding a battle line, defending a city. So uh, playing defensively... You can defin and the other thing is that Epirus is at war with Macedon as well. And you have this rebel province with uh, strong um, rebel forces, the Aetolians, right in the middle of everything here. So uh, really, you're actually in a better 
position to defend yourself than it seems. And um, the, the Macad Macadon, what, what I like to do is I let Epirus and Macadon fight each other in the Peloponnese and uh, in the north as well. So Macadon owns uh, Thessalia, of course. And uh, I let them kind of tire each other out because at the beginning your economy is not so bad. Uh, you are losing a lot of money at the start, but you can imp increase your taxes. And once you fight a few battles and uh, take maybe one city, uh, that's it. Your economy is perfectly fine after that. Uh, I've seen some people, they concentrate on taking Crete maybe first. But I don't like doing that because it's a rebel province. It's not going anywhere. Um, so what I like to do is I consolidate my forces near Athens and Sparta. And I uh, let the, I let Macedon and Epirus tire each other out. And then at the opportune moment, I attack Corinth. And then Corinth is a very rich province. Uh, so once you take Corinth... It's only a matter of time before you win these wars with Epirus and Macedon. Um, and uh, taking Thessalia, of course, this province right here, is uh, very important uh, because once you take that province, it gives you access to Thessalian cavalry, which is definitely better than your regular Hippias um, Greek medium cavalry. And uh, that will definitely improve uh, the diversity and the flexibility of your armies in D. Uh, additionally, I want to talk about, and then after that, you can, after taking Corinth and then maybe Thessaly um, and Aetolia, if you can, uh, that's when that's when I like to consolidate because then I can take Crete uh, at my leisure and uh, definitely take Pella. Um... But again, once you defeat Macedon completely, I don't worry too much about Epirus um, because I like keeping them as a buffer, but you don't have to do that. So I take uh, Destroy Macedon, and then that gives you access to just moving uh, very nicely up the coast, taking these cities up to Byzantium. And of course, because these are all Greek cities, it's very good for you because um, you are the Koinon Helenon, the essentially the EB version of the Greek cities faction. So taking those cities are very good for you. Now, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the reforms. So you notice um, all of your generals here uh, have traits. So they have city traits and it shows which city they are from. So you have an Athenian general here, and I believe he is, yes, he is the leader of the, um, he's the leader of Athens, so you can see Archon uh, to Demu. So this means that he's the Archon of Athens, the, the leader of Athens here. And uh, so same thing with your, technically, your faction leader, Arius. It says uh, in his traits, that he is the um, le uh, lead one of the leaders of Sparta. So he's the leader of Sparta. He's also the hegemon, the leader of your faction, like king of kings, basically, the hegemon. Um, but you also have a leader of Rhodes, right? So once you take more cities like Corinth, you'll start getting generals that are leaders of that city, right? So this is important for the reforms. So the first step in the reforms is to take uh, th at least three settlements that have polis three. So that means that uh, you need, uh, let me just quickly find that uh, correct building here. I, I'm having a crisis of memory. But in any case, you need a... Okay, it says city, Athens. So Athens is a minor city, and that's exactly what you need. Um, so you need three, at least three minor cities. The, that's the Polis Three building. So you can see Corinth 
is a minor city, and the other minor city in the area of here, so Sparta and um, Rhodes and um, Demetrias uh, and uh, I believe Thermon, these are large towns, so they, they are not um, minor cities. So you also have Pergamum here. Pergamum is a minor city, and that's controlled by the major faction of uh, Pergamum. Here you can see. Um, but once you take, once you have at least three settlements that are minor cities, uh, then, then you can construct uh, the Congress building. And once you construct the Congress building anywhere, so I, I would build it in Athens, but it doesn't matter. Uh, then that triggers uh, the first step of the reform, which is to construct the Koinon uh, Helenon administration a government building in at least four settlements. So once you construct that uh, administration building in at least four settlements, that triggers uh, the next step of the reforms, um, which has to do with the state leaders, which I just talked about. So again, uh, once you have family members that are leaders of a few different cities, so the, the cities you can get a leader for are uh, Ambrakia, which is up here in uh, southern Epirus, Thermon, in Aetolia, Pella here in Macedon, uh, Demetrias in um, uh, Thess Thessaly, uh, Corinth, uh, Knossos, uh, Sparta, Athens, Rhodes, Salamis, and Ephesus. So those are the cities where you can get an archon, again a leader of a city. And once you have uh, four state leaders, four city leaders, uh, you have to bring them uh, one other thing. These city leaders, you can only have a city leader of a city if that character is over 40 or 40 or over. So um, if you're not getting city, city leaders immediately, it's probably because uh, some of your family members there are too young. But uh, in any case, you have to bring four of your state leaders um, to Corinth, or at least that's something I've seen, but according to other, uh, another text I've read regarding faction reforms in EB2, uh, they can be anywhere, uh, which is good. And um, the next step here is once you have those four city leaders, then you get the Sympoliteia revolt. So a Sympoliteia is a union of cities. It's ancient Greek for like a type of Greek city union, right? So like the Sumerian Unken or the Sumerian uh, Kiengi le uh, League of Cities, if anyone knows their uh, Mesopotamian or Sumerian history, third millennium Mesopotamian history. But in any case, uh, you get the Sympoliteia revolt reform. So this uh, lets you construct the Sympoliteia government building that you can only build in two settlements and you have to construct this Sympoliteia building in two settlements simultaneously. So, you know, Athens and Corinth or Athens and Sparta are probably good options for that. Remember, you have to build those two Sympoliteia uh, government buildings simultaneously. You have to start building them sim simultaneously or else the next step in the reforms won't kick in. And uh, those settlements that you're building the building, building in, they have a script where uh, those cities get really unhappy. And uh, that, um, that's the Sympoliteia revolt, so the people getting upset about this. Um, it simulates people getting upset about this city union. Uh, and that lasts for 16 turns. And then after you complete that... Um, then you can construct the Sympoliteia government pretty much everywhere. And that really helps the Koinon Helenon faction expand more easily and create an empire because then 
uh, once you've completely reformed the coin on Helenon, that means that you are now a single state or a union like the United States of Greece and you can essentially uh, expand wherever you want. Of course, it's better to expand in um, Greek populated areas as the coin on Helenon, but then you can create uh, the empire that you want more easily. Um, additionally, uh, coin on Helenon also gets the Hellenistic reform, same as the other Hellenistic factions, uh, which means that um, you get the Thorakitai uh, reforms, the Thureos reform, which um, triggers at turn 60 in 257 BC. And you also get the, um, or sorry, you get the Thureos reform in 257 and the Thorakitai reform in uh, 222, which gives you the late cavalry and uh, Thorakitai troops. Um, yeah, so in any case, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover about the Koinon Helenon. Uh, it's one of the most interesting factions to play in EB because of the interesting reforms. Again, like I said about Hayastan, I really like the EB factions that have um, interesting and uh, historical, historically influenced reforms. Uh, so I really like the pro the way you progress from a bu leading a bunch of different city states, a bunch of different states, and then as you progress through the reforms, they become more and more united until you get essentially a united states of Greece. And I think that's very cool. So, yeah, KH, one of my favorite factions in EB2 and EB1. And I hope this guide uh, helps you out. Um, I don't want to give late game tips or anything because um, I, that's up to you. It depends on where you expand. Uh, I guess what I personally do is I, I told you I like uh, pushing back Macedon, destroying Macedon, um, taking Epirus when it's uh convenient uh taking crete moving up the coast and then taking pergamum taking these coastal cities uh sinop um moving to other greek colonies like syracuse uh, magna gratia in southern italy um massilia uh, emporion taking those greek colonies uh, moving, uh, I like keeping this empire coastal because it makes it feel more like how this league would have expanded if it was a victorious against Macedon and its many other enemies. So I just feel like that's the historical way to play this faction, even though this faction, of course, never got around to expanding and conquering Macedon, let alone conquering the Mediterranean. But in any case, I hope this guide uh, helps uh, helps you guide uh, the KH to victory in your campaigns. So in any case, like I said, KH, one of my favorite factions in EB2. And yeah, the next guide I'll be making is the guide for Pontus, because I've gotten some requests uh, to do Pontus. And um, I will wait to do Epirus after the next patch because the, the next patch is really going to change up Epirus and Carthage in the way they uh, reform and the way they work. So in any case, I'll uh, see you guys next time.